Hey, sports fans, football season is here, and it's time to get in on the action with MyBookie.net. MyBookie has real Vegas odds and incredible player props for all your favorite sporting events. MyBookie offers in-game live action on all pro and college football games. There is no better time to join MyBookie than today. Pull out your smartphone and visit our user-friendly mobile site for adrenaline on demand. Open your browser and type in MyBookie. What are you waiting for? Call 844-722-2387 or go online to join MyBookie today. No deposit necessary. Necessary terms and conditions apply. Play for fun only. Void where prohibited. Attention all sports bettors. FSN Info is the perfect place for you to make money today. They've just released another blowout winner, and it's available right now absolutely free on SBTVNation.com. FSN Info has five of the best experts in the world, known as the top five inner circle. With over 100 years of combined experience, their winning percentages are unmatched by anyone in the industry. This is the information the Las Vegas sports books do not want you to have. Go to SBTVNation.com right now and click on free winner for your free blowout winner today. Have a product, service, or website to advertise on the biggest show in the world? The SBTV Nation podcast reaches tens of thousands of the best sports fans on the planet in over 194 countries worldwide. Take your business to the next level by advertising with us. Call us now at 872-529-SBTV or email us at sbtvnation at gmail.com. Studio check. Frequencies check. We are live on air. You are listening to the impact blessing the airway. Take the journey into the world of sports, news, entertainment, while embracing the hottest beats on the planet. Rocking the mind, body, and soul, energy, electricity, and a splash of controversy. Now, without further ado, it's our pleasure to bring to you the biggest show in the world. The biggest show in the world. The biggest show in the world. The SBTV Nation. Thursday, September 15th, you got the dream in the house. What's going on, y'all? It is that time. It's time to get up, get excited for what we got going on here. I'm here chilling out with my boy, the Mad Hatter. What's happening, SPTV Nation? What are you feeling? A little romantic or something today, Dream? Started off a little slow with the music, man. What's going on? Just felt like his intro was just a tad bit classy, a little bit polished off, a little bit something, you know, to start the weekend going on Thursday, get everybody up and out of their seats, excited to have your boys back on. So I thought we'd come in and do it a little bit classy this time. <laughs> a little bit classy, a little uh, grown and sexy here on The Biggest Show in the World. Grown and sexy, that's what I'm talking about. A little grown and sexy for all. <laughs> well, first thing first, I want to just start off, and I want to thank a couple of people here on Twitter. I see that there is um, several people that have actually have hashtagged SPTV Nation in their profile name stream. Like Vegas Girl 92661. I appreciate that. The Sports God, Mr. Rick Lopez. They actually hashtag SPTV in their names. I think that's pretty cool. And uh, JC as well. What's going on, guys? How you doing? Good morning to everybody out there. And we thank all the support and the supporters that we've gotten from day one for you guys. We get on and do it for you as much as we can, as best as we can. And uh, it shows your appreciation when you do that. And we appreciate it just as well. Yeah, definitely, guys. So we are at week two of the NFL. And it is Thursday night football tonight. Got a very big show set up for you. Got my man, Anonymous Units, coming in at around 9.22. That's 22 past the hour to be breaking down some stuff. Newcomer to the show. Very excited to get him on and hear what he's got to say. Tomorrow, we bring it right back to the experienced guys. We got Jim Feist and Mark Lawrence joining us tomorrow. Big names in the industry, Dream. Definitely big names in the industry came on. Mr. Feist came on a week ago, you know, graced us with his presence, gave us his information. Always stellar information. Been in the game for an extremely long time. So you guys want to definitely get on and check that out tomorrow. Definitely. And uh, obviously over the weekend, we're going to be back on. We'll be taking your phone calls from the SBTV Nation. And then Monday, September 19th, this Monday coming up, we've got my man Big Splee that's going to be joining the show yet again. And he has not lost a progressive set of games since he's been on, Dream. 
Definitely. Big Splee comes on. Big Splee's been a big fan of this show, or a big part of this show, I should say, for a minute now. Been in the game a while himself. Uh, runs that progressive system. has been very, very successful. He, he's had a lot of success doing it with baseball. He's now moving it over to football, which is probably the cream of the crop as far as he's concerned, which we'll ask him about that. So can't wait to get him on and get his thoughts and hear what he's got going on as far as that's concerned for this season. Yeah, definitely. Dream, I have to kick up the energy right now. I got to. Have to. Kick it up. Because we are going to talk about, hey, you know what? I got to be honest with you. Congratulate. You've been murdering it in football. Whoa, 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 whoa. Slow down. Slow down. I'm just saying, you know, they, hey, you know what? I'll give you I, I mean, not that your head isn't doesn't need to get any bigger. But I'm just saying that your football has been pretty stellar, man. So congratulations to you. No doubt. Let's 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 keep it moving. We want to keep everything going <laughs> positive here. And I got to be honest with you, at the onset of this season and the start of this season, man, with all the changes that we did and all the stuff that we implemented into this program and implemented into our you know homework and study and everything that we had to do, man, I just knew that I was hopeful. That this season was going to start off with the bang, which it did. And I want to continue that momentum and that positivity straight on through. You know what I'm saying, player? I completely agree with you, man. Well, you know what? We're just going to talk real quick about what went on on Monday night because we had two games go on to close out week one. And this segment is brought to you by FSN Info. Visit our website, sbtvnation.com. Click on the banner that says free football winner to register now and receive free plays. Well, what went boys. on Monday night is FSN Washington Info. Redskins went and got a restraining order taken out of the Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> <laughs> they, they tormented them, huh? They got a restraining order out of the Steelers. Man, the Washington Redskins got a beat down. Pittsburgh showed that they are definitely going to be a force to be reckoned with. Two players out on the suspension, two of their better players out on the suspension, and they still had a dominant performance. Now, before we get carried away, we remember it is week one. Do right. remember some adjustments have to be made. Some things happen that people probably didn't expect as far as the coaching situations are concerned. I am still scratching my head about why Norman was not put on Brown. I know, right? I don't, I, dude, you explain that. That's a very good question. That's been a question circulating around the news for several days now, Dream. You know, and they're, they're backing up and they're trying to say that, you know, Norman has got like, you know, I don't know if you're aware of this, but Richard Sherman plays one side of the field. I, I believe it's the left side is the side that he particularly likes. So he plays that side of the field and whatever receiver lines up on that side, be it, be it the one or the two in the opposing team's lineup, that's who he covers. However, in certain situations, they ask him to directly cover a specific receiver when they're up against, you know, certain certain people. In this situation, I mean, you're paying this guy this type of money. He should be on the number one receiver, and he should have been on Antonio Brown in this situation. And even if you didn't want to start with him on Antonio Brown, after Antonio Brown's, I'd say, third reception, it would be time to make that type of adjustment that they just didn't weren't able to make. No, definitely not. And they did get a licking. <laughs> in their particular stadium. So, you know what? Hey, Pittsburgh Steelers might be a force to be reckoned with this year, Dream. You know, ironically, you talk about a licking. The Redskins came out, and they had success moving the ball up and down the field in the first two drives. Opted for field goals, which I know is a disappointment. Then it seemed like all the steam was taken out of them after that. And I don't. they were never able to recover. Winning at the half, whatever adjustments they made at halftime just did not seem to come to fruition. So I don't really understand what happened in that situation, but they were able to move the ball. I will say this, defensively, they've got issues. I couldn't agree more on that. They've got issues defensively. So moving over to the other game. So you called a high-scoring affair in that one, which worked out pretty well. Then you call the low-scoring affair a brutal game to watch in the second one with the Rams and the 49ers. And uh, you know what? I'm not even going to mention his name anymore. I, I'm just so happy that uh, Kaepernick is sitting on the bench. But go for it, man. What do you got? Um, that was 28 to nothing in that particular affair. And you know what? The, the 49ers seems like on opening night seem to get the job done going back even to last year. San Fran seems to have it going on on opening night. I don't know what it is. It might be something special in the water down there. I'm not sure. But they definitely shine on opening night. But please do not fool yourself because as much as San Fran shine the opening night, 
The Rams also shined, but not. <laughs> with, with, they, they, sh- they were glow in the dark. <laughs> glow in the dark. They were a glow stick that <laughs> went out right after the first. Yes. Ball, when they received the ball. And St. Louis is now happy to not be associated with the Rams anymore. Right? Man, the Rams were as bad as it could get. Todd Gur- uh, Gurley just, you know, and here we go again. Another Hard Knocks team. You know, this team was featured on Hard Knocks. Gurley was, you know, ma- I-, I think some of that can help lead to some distractions. Fisher, you know, I- I'm-, I'm caught out with Fisher. I don't know about his deal. You know, he's looking for a contract extension. I don't really know if I want to see him back at the helm again at this St. Louis team. And I could tell the NFL and the Rams one thing. You go out there and have an abysmal season, oh. you will be looking to move somewhere else. Yeah, probably. <laughs> at the end of this season, you'll be wanting to move somewhere, anywhere, because the people in L.A. are not coming to see you be booty. Not at all. And you know what I mean? Because that's a very high-profile city. And, you know, I don't know if the media is as bad as they are in New York, but I'm sure it's pretty damn close because they have high expectations when you're in these marquee cities. Well, you're going to have to win. If you want to be successful in L.A., you're going to have to win. I mean, attendance was down for the Lakers, okay? The Lakers this season because they weren't able to, you know, formulate a winning, have a winning season. So, and when I, and I say attendance down, I don't, I mean, you know, it's very slightly, not like it was anything crazy. But when you're coming in and you are not the Lakers, you are the Rams, and you're looking to build the stadium. <laughs> Brutalized. Brutalized is Absolutely. the word. Brutalized is the word. Poor fans out there. Well, hey, you know what? That's just one game, Dream. It's just, just one game. So we'll see how it ends up shaking out with them. But I can tell you this much, that you wanted to talk about the Smoke and Mirror show with the 49ers. Well, guess where the 49ers got to play this week? They play Killer Cam, which is one of my five stars of the week. So be sure to listen back with us on Sunday as I got a lot of information about that particular matchup. Uh, I am very excited about that game as I look forward into the future of the NFL this week. Well, I'm sure that, you know, I mean, that's right up your alley. It's a, They're a 14 and a half point favorite. So that's right yes, up sir, that, that like, is exactly like, where you like to live. Get it now. I see that thing <laughs> rising. You really think so, huh? You th- I, I, I don't know if it's going to go past that. I don't, I don't know if it's going to go past it, that It is either. an NFL I, it, game. It, but it should. It, it, <laughs> I don't know if it's going <laughs> to go past that. Listen, I, I know I, the Niners, I was a slightly impressed with their defense. I thought their defense played pretty well. Of course, I'm going to give. I'm gonna blame some of that on the Rams' execution or an inability to execute. I'm not going to get excited about San, San Fran's offense at all. I thought they were putrid even against the Rams. They did come out and look like, you know, they had the Rams on their heels in the beginning of the game, but the Rams did make adjustments at the half and came back and then was able to shut most of that down. So uh, I'm really worried about what San Fran's going to, what's going to happen to San Fran in Carolina because it could be a crime scene. (laughs) Get the yellow tape up. Congratulations to everybody that's out there that won over the weekend. And good morning to everybody that's on Twitter retweeting our show. It's been live already on social media dream. People are ready. For football to get right back going on a Thursday night. No doubt. But I got to bring it over real quick to the MLB. We got 17 games left, Dream. That's it for the regular season, okay? Okay. And the pennant races are really heating up. So we just have to have a quick conversation about that before we take a break. But this segment for the MLB standings is brought to you by MyBookie.net. My bookie is the only sports contest site where you can play for fun and win for real. Whether you're an expert or a rookie, play now at mybookie.net and use the promo code SBTV. Dream, the Red Sox are still in first place. As you alluded to. And the American League. So uh, they are only, but they lost two in a row to Baltimore. They're only one game up on Baltimore, and Toronto is two games out. Of first place. Cleveland Indians are six up on the Detroit Tigers. Uh, Texas is eight and a half games up on Seattle, but dream Seattle's won eight in a row now. Seattle with eight in a row coming on strong. Another thing that you alluded to as yeah, well. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're only, I mean, we'll get into the wild card standings in one second here, but, you know, looking at it, as far as the American League is concerned, those are your division leaders. And right now, if it ended today, Baltimore would play Toronto, but you got Detroit one game out. Seattle one and a half games out, and the New York Yankees two games out of the wild card dream. I don't know where that came from with the Stanks. 
all how's of a, a sudden kind of <laughs> how's a rod doing <laughs> killing the a- base still the anchor at s not at all not at all washington nationals are 10 games up on the new york metropolitans in the national league east the cubs are 17 games up on saint lucia saint lucia lucia's got one game to be eliminated from winning a division title man so it's either the cubs either have to win one more or St. Louis loses one more, and the Cubs clinch the division already. Sure. Uh, the Dodgers are five games up over the San Francisco Giants. So there's been I nothing didn't... giant about the San. About oh that. my <laughs> God, I know. So if it and the wild card, if it ended today, the San Francisco Giants would play the New York Metropolitans in the wild card game. It would be in San Francisco, and you'd most likely see Madison Bumgarner versus Thor. In that particular affair. And St. Lucia's only a half game out of the wild card. So, Dream, anything could happen here. Anything can happen. The landscape is absolutely bananas. Yes. The only thing that can't happen is the Cubs can't not make it. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you, you got to. Basically, you need St. Lucia to win like 17 in a row and the Cubs to lose 17 in a row. Sure. <laughs> and, then, and then you'd be all right. You know what I mean? But uh, it's all good, guys. And uh, that's baseball. It is heating up. And, you know, I, I right now is the time where it's where you should be getting excited a little bit. So now from a from a from a wagering standpoint, though. Yes. What? See, my thing is, do you now? Because I'm not playing baseball. Obviously, football's here. Base, we even looking at baseball is obviously a wrap as far as wagering is concerned. But we do talk about a little bit of wagering on this show. How do you feel now? It, now, what's your point? What, what's your emphasis? I should say. Are you ready to jump on and play to play Boston down the stretch? Are you, do, or do you back off? How do you feel about these teams? What's your position as far as that's concerned? I love the teams that absolutely have to win. Because we talked about these must-win situations in the past with other sports, Hat. Yeah, I know. You know our luck with that has been abysmal. Booty. Terrible. Just the teams that absolutely need to win and the teams that are trying to close out the divisions. Like right now, I could tell you this much that I would definitely be betting the Cubs right now. Because they okay. only have to win one more game in order to do it. But who knows, though, because St. Louis loses one game and they could just, they'll be popping champagne. By, it's for uh, that nasty, you know. scrappy team that's trying to get in that you need, that you think that is better than maybe the numbers are coming in at that you could maybe ride their coattails. Yeah, there's a couple of different situations. We'll talk about that at another time here. Okay. So uh, we're going to take a quick break, guys. We'll be right back with our boy, Anonymous Units. You are listening to your fellas at the SBTV Nation. Looking to win big this football season? Go to smpicks.com, the number one sports expert in picking winners. Everyone wants that winning edge. At smpicks.com, you'll get 30 years of experience in picking big winners on all sports with our team of experts. At smpicks.com, it's all about being a winner. Owner Scott Matthews just can't see it any other way. Visit right now at smpicks.com and receive your first huge winner on us absolutely free. That's right. All listeners receive your first huge winner on us. Scott Matthews, a great American. It's absolutely free. That's right. Free just by registering at smpicks.com forward slash SBTV. Hey, sports fans. Football season is here, and it's time to get in on the action with mybookie.net. MyBookie.net is the first and only sports action website with real Vegas odds and incredible player props for all your favorite sporting events. The best part is there are no sign-up fees and no deposits required to join, play, or win. From pro to college football, MyBookie.net lets you play online and win big. There's no better time to join MyBookie than today. Go online to MyBookie.net to open an account to start playing with the big boys. MyBookie has proven to be the most exciting online experience for all sports fans. Get in on the action. Visit MyBookie.net today. Call 844-722-2387. That's 844-722-2387. Or visit MyBookie.net today. MyBookie.net is the real deal. Only the biggest, only the best, only at MyBookie. Sign up today. No deposit necessary. Terms and conditions apply. Play for fun only. Void where prohibited. 
UnitsVIP.com is the most selective sports handicapping service that you'll ever find. Owned and operated by a career sports investor, UnitsVIP.com is a low-volume, high-end service that sticks to the four- and five-star material. If you're patient enough to wait for edges big enough to call investments, then UnitsVIP.com is what you're looking for. If you're ready to take the step from sports gambler to sports investor, then visit UnitsVIP.com today. Follow on Twitter at AnonymousUnits. All right, Dream, we are back and ready to go because we've got some, a big weekend of sports coming up. And I know everybody, you know, Thursday kind of kicks the weekend off for me. You know, as soon as I'm done with work because my kid has his football games and that's when it all begins for me, Dream. No doubt. Definitely. So, you know, and, and, and I know a lot of people out there go to the bar on Thursday night, get all banged up. I don't know how you function on Fridays, to be honest with you, because you know what? As it gets, as I get older and older, dream, it's getting more and more difficult for me to drink heavily at night and function the next day. Sure. It really is. So without further ado, I think that we are graced with the presence of our boy Anonymous Units from V. What's going on, buddy? How are you? Very good. How are you guys doing? Good morning. Oh, we're fantastic. UnitsVIP.com. That is correct. That is correct. All right. So, uh, from UnitsVIP.com. Thank you very much. What's going on? I'm just getting up, finishing my card off this morning. Typically, I finish it up around Thursday. Um, But yeah, so a little bit about me. I've been a career sports investor for about eight, nine years now. I haven't had actual employment since then. But I've been doing this a lot longer. I just stopped going to work when I didn't need to. Um, oh, nice. So you're doing this full time? Yeah. Full time. This is full it, uh, time sports yeah. investor you, here. Fantastic. You, you bet. All right. Uh, dream job, and I'm going to live it as long as I can. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. So I'd like to just talk. So where are you from? Well, I grew up in Canada. I was born in Victoria, moved to Lake of the Woods, Minnesota in my teens. And uh, that's where I spend most of my time. Fantastic. All right. Well, you know what? We've got a massive slate of games moving on. We've got games tonight. We've got games tomorrow. We've got games all weekend long. So I'd like to hear your thoughts on anything that's like a little sweet spot for you that you want to break down. You have the floor. This is your time to shine. This is our boy, Anonymous Units. What's up? All right, guys. Well, um, let's start by telling you about how I kind of do my things. We'll use one of these games that's not on my coin card as a, an example, but it is a lean. So um, I start by projecting the spread myself. Uh, usually on Sundays, as the games are happening before they come out, I've already kind of made my numbers that I think it should be. Um, I then have a computer system that also projects spreads. So that'll come out. Uh, I'll compare those numbers to mine. Um, so let's use Tennessee versus Detroit as an example here. Um, this is not on the client card as of now, but it, it does sit on the bubble. My projection was five and a half points, uh, and it is five and a half points. But my system likes Detroit minus 10, which I find very bizarre. So the system is more or less set up to cap closer to public opinion. Uh, so we see that about four, four and a half points out. And uh, some people would see that as a lot of value on Detroit. Uh, I see it as Vegas hiding value on Tennessee uh, to deter sharp action from putting a lot of money on it, right? So if this is just a classic overreaction to Detroit beating Indy. People will have Detroit in teasers, money on parlays. Uh, Vegas would really prefer a Tennessee cover or win, and uh, they hit value on them. So right off the bat, I'm kind of tipped off by what the Vegas line maker is thinking. Uh, that's step one. So then I go through all the matchups that have circled for each position, like DB versus wide receiver, the trenches, etc. I try to figure out what the game plan should be based on the matchups and the tendencies of the coaches versus certain coverages or weaknesses and strengths, how they typically attack or avoid uh, in games. So that will lead me to another conclusion by early Monday morning on about this far, and uh, we start seeing some line movement. I track that line movement from you know, the time it opens since all my wager is made. Uh, but by Monday morning, I'll generally have a good idea of what's going to move, what's going to stay, what's sharp, what's square, what I have to lock in early, what's worth waiting for. Um, another angle, UnitsVIP.com, uh, likes to use is the media. These people are reading a teleprompter, <laughs> which is owned by big money, and big money is always in bed with other big money. So it seems to me that the casinos probably have a hand in 
writing the teleprompter script. And if you think about the insane lies in this direction, uh, it only makes sense. They told us Tom Brady needs to retire. He ends up being a home dog in prime time against Cincinnati. In prime time in Patriot Land. Like, yeah, already could happen though. Pat's dogs at home in prime time is hilarious. Everyone bet on Dalton New England crushed and went on to win the Super Bowl that year. Right. The next year they tell us Peyton Manning sex. Well, he looked awful, but he went on to win the Super Bowl. Uh, Bradford joined the Eagles and lit it up in preseason. We're told he's the best QB in the NFC East. <laughs> Eli Romo Cousins. I mean, you see my point, right? Oh, yeah. Golden State, they scored zero points in the last four minutes and 30 seconds of Game 7 at home. The media really didn't touch on that at all. You think that would be a hell of a story, but... Yeah, exactly. So, Guys, so they was... will definitely direct you where they want to direct you. You and know what? You need to realize that sometimes it's a story and sometimes it's just a misdirection. You know what, guys? Uh, you're listening right now to Anonymous Units from UnitsVIP.com, and we're talking to him about the lines as far as them being set out by the bookmakers and maybe trying to play some tricks on you here to try to even out the money. Um, I do understand what you're talking about with the Detroit Lions being a six-point favorite over the Tennessee Titans. I mean, when you looked at Tennessee in that last game, the Dream and I actually thought that Tennessee might have had a chance to make some noise in that particular game and beat the Vikings. But surprisingly, the Vikings shocked us all. But yeah, you I, might I, have an overreaction. Mm-hmm. Well, they find a way to at least balance it, or if not, just not allow the Sharks to crush them. It's not a big deal if the public wins. It's never um, an extreme amount of money. But if they had a line way too high and the Sharks hammered down two, three points, that could be a huge loss for them. So they got to definitely offer more value on the public side, I think, more often than not. Right. That's just my opinion, though. What's your thoughts so, um, on, what's your thoughts on, let's say, a sharp player coming in and laying, let's say, a couple hundred thousand on one side to move the line to where it wants to be, to where, where they want to be, and then hammering the other side? It's been done before. Right. Uh, but Billy Walters is, you know, known to have done that in the past. It wouldn't surprise me. Um, but it's not something I typically worry about. I know that the Sharps won't all agree. I mean, I'm Sharp. I don't always agree with the Sharps, the quote-unquote Sharps. But, um, yeah, I, I, I don't hammer a couple hundred thousand. I'm a, I'm a thousand a unit guy. I only go up to five. I try to grind out my 50 to 100K a year and just enjoy life. Uh, that kind of line movement is not for me. <laughs> so, Dream, this guy's gambling for a living. No doubt. I is hear it, it definitely. <laughs> yeah, I love it, man. That's good stuff. Yeah. And, and you know what yeah. You know what I love about you is that you're actually putting your own money up, which, oh, yeah. you know, some people don't do. They just, they just go out and, um, you know, make their plays and put them out there. But you're actually playing these particular matchups and making a living off it. So that's pretty damn cool. Um, what's your thoughts as far as I, I've noticed that you've been entrenched in the NFL. Are you playing any college? You doing any baseball? What, what are you doing? I don't typically play baseball until postseason with the 162 games. I just, if they don't care, I can't put my money on it. Uh, as far as NCAA, I usually tap it, watch it, get ready for some big games or some bowl games, but I don't generally invest in it either. Um, last week I did have a play. I had Mississippi State money line parlayed with uh, Jimmy Rivera and that UFC 203 okay. to get my even money there. That worked out really well. Um, but other than that, yeah, I, I don't really touch college, especially this early in the year. A little bit later we'll have the odd play. Uh, I mean the NFL, UFC, NBA would be my top, my top money makers for sure. Got it. So I have a question for you. Uh, we're looking at a couple of different matchups here in the NFL. Uh, we've got the we got the big game tonight with the New York Jets and the Buffalo Bills. It looks like a pick 'em with an under over of forty and a half. Do you have anything that you're seeing in this game that you feel is interesting to look for? Well, I think for starters, the line opening at you know two and a half for Buffalo, uh, moving all the way to minus one or pick 'em. We're seeing here. So the sharp action is definitely on the Jets, and it looks like the public action on the Jets, too. Uh, when that happens, I ch- typically just sit out. I could see this game going either way. Uh, the Jets are definitely the better team now. They have, um, they're slightly more stout on defense and offense, I think. The better quarterback, the better receivers. Um, so I definitely see why the action's on them. But 
Yeah, in a divisional game home opener for Buffalo, I, they warned themselves last week. I'm personally staying off this one, but I think it'll be a it'll be a tight game. It feels like. I don't really blame you for staying away from this one. AFC East matchup. I believe that Buffalo has owned this series, if I'm not mistaken. But um, you know, over at least the last few years, I just mm-hmm. for some reason this game is kind of bothering me a little bit. Um, looking at it here, yeah, Buffalo is five and zero in the last five games when playing the New York Jets. So, Jets, my, I mean, hey, you know, obviously you got the Jets' former coach there, you know, playing uh, mm-hmm. playing against each other here. So you got the Jet, and both teams are oh. They've both oh, no. lost the game. They're 0 and 1. So whoever loses this game is going to be 0 and 2 in conference yeah. play, which sucks. They'll be done. I think whoever loses this will not be making the playoffs. I can only assume. Um, but yeah, it's going to be an interesting game. Uh, for me, you know, I don't have to have action. I don't even look at it like action. You know, I look at this like sports investing. So yep. if I have to sit down and watch a game to study it for a future investment, then that's what I'll do. And I'm going to really enjoy that tonight. I think it's going to be very telling as to what's to come for both teams. Fantastic. So what do you got going on? Do you have any kind of special promos or anything you're offering to the audience? Yeah, I do. I got uh, a twenty nine ninety nine seven day pass for your 700th episode milestone there. That's going on for another week. That's about half price, so that's the lowest you'll ever see out of me. And this is a really big week, actually. We have three plays for over three units, um, and that's fairly fairly rare for uh, regular season action to have three of them. So this is a great week to sign up. All right, for a whole week. Yeah, seven days. If you don't profit, I'll keep you on until October so you profit. But you're going to profit this weekend. This is a big weekend for me. So, Dream, if you don't profit with his service, he'll keep you going until he does. That's what's up. That, I like that. Definitely, yeah. I definitely do. We're going to do that for your uh, for the seven day pass special here for all your uh, all your viewers. I love the nation. I want to make the money. I'm not here just to make twenty bucks. It's it's uh, it's worth every penny of the service. And uh, if you guys want, I could uh, dive right into the game off my client card that'll be coming. Yeah, go for it, man. What do you got? Yeah. Well. Uh, <clears throat> I got the Saints versus the Giants as one of my top plays this week. Um, I really like the Saints, and I'll kind of break down why. We're going to go through my checklist. So I made this line at about three and a half for the Giants. My computer system agreed, so there's really nothing that stands out there but a full point of value. Uh, the line sat at minus five for just a little bit. The Sharks, they took that value away, and now it's just sitting idle. So it uh, looks to me like the Sharks are very comfortable with that plus five, plus four and a half. The Giants' defense is clearly better here. Um, as far as the matchup, still there's really nothing that I can see that either coach is going to pick on or avoid. It just seems to me that the Giants do have the better defense. But the media is overreacting so much to the Saints having no defense at all. Yeah. So that's just a red flag for me. I don't buy it. I expected their D to be much better this year. And uh, after watching that game closely, they blew a lot of coverages that essentially cost them that game. Those are the mistakes that are very fixable. So the focus will be on defense. And I don't think Dallas has a top-notch D. Eli didn't really move the ball great against them. It shouldn't be much different here. Breeze is miles better than Dak Prescott, and Dak almost won that game. So uh, I also have an algorithm that loves this. Uh, the Saints to win outright, actually, not even to cover. Wow. And uh, I usually ignore the final score on my algorithms. But uh, here we're seeing 21-19 at, uh, a few times, which I find very low and funny. But as you dig into it a bit deeper, you realize if the Saints do win by two, that means every Giants teaser would fail by half a point. <laughs> if, if the sum of 40 does happen on this 52-point total, yeah. then not even the 10-point teaser will cover, and that over is the most heavily bet uh, total on the board right now. So yeah. I can only laugh when I see those numbers. I'm not uh, investing in the under by any means, but it does feel right. Fifty-two and a half like a is yeah, fifty-two and a half is the total on this game. You look, you're talking yeah. about the New York uh, New York Giants hosting the New Orleans Saints. Giants are minus four and a half right now with an under over a fifty-two and a half, and that's a Sunday game at one o'clock. And you're thinking that Breezy's going to continue doing his thing, huh? Yeah, uh, Breezy's going to get it done. I don't think it's going to be a shootout by any means. In fact, we're looking like it might be raining in New York on Sunday. That should help keep the points a little lower, and it always helps the dogs cover the points, obviously, when there's less scored, uh, less margin for the gap there, right? So that's great. 
Um, I go, I mean, I go as far as consulting with a guy that studies astrology and everything. Uh, <laughs> I, get, I get a little report from him. I don't weigh in on any of my avenues too much, but it's just nice to see that even from that angle, it looks like Drew Brees should have a much better day than Eli. Um, I know that's way left field, but I've seen people predicting championships and this and that off astrology and numerology, so I had to look into it. It's just, I'll, I'll read a report on absolutely everything I can. I get every piece of information I can there you go. before making decisions. Fantastic. Guys, this is Anonymous Units from Units VIP. So we got a couple minutes left to tell everybody once again what you got going on for the weekend. And we look forward to getting you back on the show at some point, brother. Yeah, I'd love to be. All right, well, for the weekend, uh, I, I'm recording my uh, podcast tonight. So we'll have a new episode on Saturday released. It's called the Pigskin Profits Podcast. I co-host it with a couple uh, professional handicappers, and we each give away one playoff our client card every week. Uh, full breakdown. So that's a good show, Pigskin Profits Podcast. And uh, you can find them on Twitter at Pigskin Profits. We'll have a link there, or find it on my page, add it on this unit. Um, we got that twenty nine ninety nine seven day pass running for another week or so. And that's about it for the weekend. I've got about four plays circled here. I'm going to take it easy um, and just, you know, very uh, low volume, but high results what we're looking for here today. All right. Sorry, this weekend, we have nothing today. All right, fantastic. In to that giant game, I, I really, you know, <clears throat> I understand where you're coming from a little. However, mm-hmm. it, Breeze is always going to get his, as far as I'm concerned. He's going to be able to move the ball. He can move the ball against any defense in the NFL yep. right now. He's That's the type of quarterback he is, and that's just how dynamic he is. On the flip side of that, we look at the, Saint, we look at the Saints defense, and the Saints defense, who had Sunday's game in hand against Oakland and completely let it go. Now, you flip that and you look at, what the Giants can do offensively. Now, I know it was against the Cowboys. You did mention that you didn't expect the Cowboys to be that good. But the ability to get this ball down the field to Odell Beckham and also Victor Cruz, uh, possibly to have some success running the ball at home with their home opener. I mean, you know, and I know you generally do like to stay away from plays that the public are, you know, loading up on, which you, you talked about this over being – being you know everybody's loading up on this over but every now and then sometimes everybody is right and does win i don't see how this isn't a high scoring affair yeah that's fair that's a fair assumption it is a lot to ask though i mean you're a fumble in the red zone away from not covering that total at all times um but yeah no i i get what you're saying i and that's exactly what everyone's going to be seeing here and the line maker isn't too worried about it, you know? So that's just yeah. part of the angle I look at. I do expect it to be a good game. The Giants should have some success. But I don't really see them blowing anybody out here. Uh, not not too many teams didn't look like they play called to blow out Dallas. They were just content keeping things in control. Um, some teams go for the jugular, you know? Yeah. So that's uh, when you're writing points. Like, we're not here, obviously. But if you were, the coaching tendencies there is something I consider heavily because if teams aren't going to try to kill you and they're just going to let you hang out and just win, you don't want to be laying points. Got and it. I kind of feel like the Giants might be that kind of team. Yeah. Where they'll start uh, running and punting if they get up 14 in this game or 7 or 10 and that back door will be gaping for us. Sure. I don't think we need the back door. I really don't. Um, but I do, I do think it's going to be available just about all game. I don't think we'll ever be out of this one. Got it. All right, guys, sounds good. Well, we got to take a break, and you were listening to Anonymous Units, and uh, thank you very much for joining us, my man. We appreciate it. Thank you guys for having me. All right, and uh, we'll be retweeting your stuff out later on today. I appreciate it. All right? So you guys have a good one. Uh, You are listening to your boys. We're going to take a break, and we'll be right back with the SBTV Nation. UnitsVIP.com is the most selective sports handicapping service that you'll ever find. Owned and operated by a career sports investor, UnitsVIP.com is a low-volume, high-end service that sticks to the four- and five-star material. If you're patient enough to wait for edges big enough to call investments, then UnitsVIP.com is what you're looking for. If you're ready to take the step from sports gambler to sports investor, then visit UnitsVIP.com today. Follow on Twitter at AnonymousUnits. 
Have a product, service, or website to advertise on the biggest show in the world? The SBTV Nation podcast reaches tens of thousands of the best sports fans on the planet in over 194 countries worldwide. Take your business to the next level by advertising with us. Call us now at 872-529-SBTV or email us at sbtvnation at gmail.com. Attention all sports bettors. FSN Info is the perfect place for you to make money today. They've just released another blowout winner, and it's available right now absolutely free on SBTVNation.com. FSN Info has five of the best experts in the world, known as the top five inner circle. With over 100 years of combined experience, their winning percentages are unmatched by anyone in the industry. This is the information the Las Vegas sports books do not want you to have. Go to SBTVNation.com right now and click on free winner for your free blowout winner today. All right, Dream, we're back. And we got a couple of games to talk about tonight. Definitely. Because I think it is that time. We've got one in college and one in pro. And we already started talking about the AFC East matchup. Since you've had the hot hand in football, Dream, I'm going to let you lead it off. Where would you like to start? Well, I mean, when you look at this particular matchup, these two teams know each other. They know each other well. It's going to be a chess match tonight for sure. You've got two coaches... You know, I happen to feel, I'm beginning to feel like Rex Ryan is a little bit overrated as a head coach. I, I, I've said in the past, I thought he's a pretty good defensive coordinator. I don't necessarily know that he's the greatest head coach or, or even a good head coach. Yeah. In the landscape of head coaches, I want to say he may be average to bad. Average to bad. You know, well, everybody did look at his first couple of years as a head coach with the Jets. I mean, he led them all the way to the AFC championship game with Mark Sanchez dream. So that was definitely impressive. But ever since then, the man just has not materialized into having a halfway decent team. The Buffalo Bills only put up seven points in their last game. So it almost feels like that he's just bringing that defensive mindset into his head coaching position and just kind of neglects the offense a touch. When you talk about him and his success that he had in the past, I think you look at that team and you can talk about a team that had a really good defense that was not necessarily blueprinted by him. He kind of just received that defense, got dropped into his hands. Now, he did work with the offense a little bit, and I'm sure he improved, put his own fingerprint on that defense as well, but a lot of that team had already been established, and they had already had that defense. So you look at a team that defensively was probably somewhat the equivalent of last year's Denver Broncos, and then you implement a Mark Sanchez, and you use him in a game manager position, and then you're going to see that type of success. But still, that being said, as the seasons went on, we noticed a deterioration of everything. And now we look at him over in Buffalo, and there hasn't been a lot of great success there. I don't necessarily know that the Bills really know what they're doing or have an identity for themselves. I don't know. I think there's question marks at the quarterback position if Tyrod Taylor is the answer. The running backs is very hard. Excuse me. The wide receivers is very hard to keep Sammy Watkins uninjured, as I, I mentioned him being Mr. Glass. Sure. You know, this team, there's a lot of question marks when you look at this team. I don't feel his team identity-wise knows who they are. And that you can blame the head coach for. The head coach has to let this team know, okay, you're a defensive team. All right, we're a defensive team. You know, we're going to run the ball. You know, this is what we are. Or we're an offensive team. We're going to throw the ball, and this is what we are. But in this case, I think that you have the Bills try to flip-flop back and forth, and they really don't have a true identity of what they are and what they want to do. And I think... That's a big part of their issue. Now, we go over to the Jets. The Jets, we got Ryan Fitzpatrick at the helm. Not that great of an outing last week. We're looking at 19 for 36, 189 yards with two touchdowns. Not phenomenal. But he did play the Cincinnati Bengals, who have a good defense. The one thing, bright spot, I will talk about this Jet team that I thought was going to be an issue, and I didn't think it fit well. Matt Forte did turn out to be... One of one bright spot in this offense last week. 22 carries for 96 yards, also five receptions for 59 yards. So he turned out, as far as I'm concerned, to be 
a lot better and make a lot bigger of an impact on this team than I expected him to. We're going to keep looking at that moving forward because the jury, for me, as far as I'm concerned, is still out on Matt Forte being a good fit for the Jets. Now, as far as tonight's game is concerned, I'm leaning towards the Jets. You're leaning towards the, the Jets. I feel that they're the better team, well-rounded. I feel like Fitzpatrick has a nod as the quarterback. You know, I feel like Brandon Marshall, definitely, he's looking to, you know, probably get his season started as he was not really a factor last week in last week's matchup. I expect, but the thing that bothers me about this game is, you know, one thing that that <clears throat> Fat Rex is definitely capable of doing is <laughs> motivating his players. Yes. yes. We may not have seen that motivation come through last week on the road in, in Baltimore. Some of that we give to Baltimore's defense as well. But you are going to be at home in your own stadium where you should be able to get a little bit more intensity out of your players as far as that's concerned. It's just, will these guys step up and execute the way you expect them to execute with the Bills? That's the question mark for this particular game. However, that being said, I am slightly leaning Jets. You're slightly leaning Jets. All right. Well, here's the problem with the Jets is that last week they gave up 324 yards through the air. And obviously, you know that A.J. Green had his way with Revis. But you look, look at this and you look at what Buffalo does. They're not going to scare you offensively. And they're not going to scare you through the air. So it almost balances itself out. And I think I agree with you here. The only challenge that I see is, number one, Buffalo's owned them. Number two is that the Jets have been an awful road team in the last three years. They're 8-17 and 17 in the last 25 games on the road, Dream. So game bothers me a little bit, especially being an interdivision matchup. I think that it might be tight, and I just can't put my money on this particular game. So I'm going to take a pass. I think it might be like a ugly, nasty, low-scoring affair. Maybe I may consider doing like a first half under or something like that, but I got to look into it a little bit further and go from there. But I think I could see maybe like a 9-3 half or like 6-3 or 10-3 or something stupid, you know? I and believe that this is one of those games that has that you can tease it any way and it's going to work. Yeah, right. We, I we've seen that. You can take the seven point teaser and you can put it on either side and it works and put it with either the, uh, and I put it with the under and not necessarily over, but I put it with the under and I think you're going to have success teasing the under and either side. Fantastic. All right. Well, I wish you the best of luck with it. If you're out there playing it and gambling on this game, because I know all you junkies out there, whether you like the game or not, probably going to be betting the game. And if you don't like a side, and if you were to throw this game right smack in the middle of a Sunday card, you got to ask yourself, would I bet it or would I not? And if the answer is no, then you shouldn't be betting the game tonight. That's all I'm going to say about that from however many decades I've been gambling now. I've learned that lesson the hard way several times, Dream. So let's move on to college football because we got a big one. We've got the, uh, the surprise team of the season so far. And that is the Houston Cougars are playing tonight, Dream. And I'm going to let you lead off with this one because Houston is minus eight and a half. They're playing at tennis. I'm sorry, at Cincinnati. And Cincinnati is a home team underdog on prime time. So Houston obviously coming off the big win last week where they played nobody. <laughs> I think who did they play Lamar last week? Yeah, Lamar. beat them 42 to nothing. And obviously the big win playing Oklahoma. But what do you think here, Dream? You think Cincinnati's got a shot? Well, we can't talk enough about Greg Ward Jr. Right. We talk about the Houston Cougars. You have to talk about Greg Ward Jr. Absolutely uh, phenomenal talent. I, has he been talked about in the Heisman? Is he in the Heisman talks or no? Uh, I don't. I have not really heard a lot of rumblings. I um, haven't either, which I find bizarre because I feel like he should be right there in some of the Heisman talks. I mean, you look at his numbers this season, 23 for 40, 320, 321 yards with two touchdowns. I mean, that's, that's, that's not nothing to just, you know, blow off right now at this point. Now, the thing about Houston is, 
you say Houston's a surprise, but for us, it's not a surprise. We knew Houston was good last year yeah. at the end of the season. You know, we 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 cued in on them, especially you know with our work that we were doing in Texas, as far as KCOH is concerned, and being on the radio down there, we were definitely well abreast of this Houston Cougar team. The question was, would they be able to execute this season against, you know, some of the major matchups that they had? And so far, they have as they brought it home against Oklahoma. Of course, we're not going to go too crazy about Oklahoma, but we, we do know that they are they do have a potent defense. Oklahoma doesn't. Houston went in there and did what they had to do. Now, talk about this other team in Cincinnati. This game here is going to be a true test because in some respects, these teams kind of mirror each other. The one difference that Houston has this year that they didn't have last year is they are able to get it done uh, with Kevin Justice on the ground. Last year, Greg Ward Jr. was not only their passing leader, he was also their rushing leader. Now, he's got the you know ability to hand the ball off in the backfield. You're talking about Justice, who's averaging, who's got 27 carries, 111 yards with two touchdowns this season. That gives... Ward a break sure. to do what he's got to do and also opens up the field for them. So I think when you look at what has been successful for them this year, that partic- you can put a fingerprint right there when you look and say, hey, this him, his ability to hand the ball off and get some, you know, some positive yardage on the ground opens up his pass game to make him that much dynamic. Now back to back to Cincinnati that I was trying to get into. Cincinnati, we talk about Hayden Moore. 40 for 66, 510 yards, five TDs, one interception. Now, I know the, the 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 people, the teams that they've played hasn't been that great, the competition. However, numbers are numbers. You have to put up, you have to beat who you play. And they have convincingly done that, you know, and done it in an impressive fashion. We are also talking about a running back featuring Tron Green, 32 carries, 150 yards on the ground. This particular game, I predict this game is going to be a very. I, I think it's going to be a good, good game. I mean, these teams both got off offensively are you know able to get what they want done. You know, they can move the ball up and down the field. You have a, a good pass game and a good run game. The one instance that I'm going to give Houston the nod on is I believe that Houston's defense is a lot better, and I believe they're going to be very good against Cincinnati, who are going to want to try to establish the run. Houston has allowed this season run yards, pass uh, rushing yards. 42.5 yards. That is immaculately impressive. Yes, it is. Cincinnati will not be able to get this ball going on the ground. I don't feel like the, the run game will be going at all, which will put them in the air that much more, which can lead to tips, interceptions, turnovers. Turn the ball over on this Houston Cougar team, and you will be looking at <laughs> you'll be looking at your towel over your head. A la Killer Cam do it last year's Super Bowl. Right. Uh, because this team will definitely strike and strike hard and fast. I like Houston to win the game tonight. I see as a spread, we have seven and a half. Eight, I have eight and a half here, but you might see something half. different. Yep. All right, I had seven and a half uh, when, when I did my homework on this. You got to manipulate the numbers, guys. Just to be on the safe side, you definitely don't want to give more than a touchdown. Uh, you can bring it down, and, and if it's eight and a half, bring it down two. If it's seven and a half, bring it down one. You might also want to think to tease this game with the Monday night game, with the, excuse me, the Thursday night game total. I like the under and the total in the Thursday night game to tease with this game as well. That might be an option for you to get rid of the points altogether. Those are just a couple little options. Once again, we are not handicappers, but looking at this and breaking this down, a couple little options that might work in your favor. I see Houston winning this game. But we always want to get rid of the points if we can. I consider myself a sophisticated player. Sophisticated That's... player. <laughs> so there's one thing I do want to point out to you. I mean, I know it goes back several years, but in Cincinnati, yes. Houston has not won there at all in like the last five games. They're 0-5 straight up in the last five games when playing on the road in Cincinnati. Cincinnati, I mean, last year they were halfway decent, and over the last 23 games, they are 16-7. and So looking at this particular matchup, Looking at Cincinnati, who puts up 33 points a game, they might be able to trade points with Houston, and they might be able to do it through the air just a touch. The game's scary to me. A home team underdog on primetime, you already know how I feel about that. I think Houston is the better team. I think this game might be a little bit tighter than everybody thinks. Maybe with Houston getting a uh, fourth-quarter touchdown, taking the lead, and winning the game. You That's know the problem with you. The problem when you look at it is, and you, you mentioned that you look at Houston's defense. Pass yards allowed. They only allow 190 yards yeah. through the air. Okay, 
Uh, Cincinnati is definitely passing for 255 yards, so they're used to relying on their passing game in, in that respect. Right. But the Houston defense is not necessarily going to allow them to get that off. Then they're going to opt to try to run the ball, which has been a strong suit for them for most of this season, you know, with 201 rushing yards for the season. Houston's only allowed 42 and a half rushing yards. I know. So whether it be through the air or on the ground, Houston pretty much their defense I don't think is going to have it. Now the flip side of that is Cincinnati's offense has allowed 273 passing yards. So Greg Ward Jr. has got to be foaming at the mouth because they only throw for 225. Yeah. So if they let Houston do what Houston's capable of doing, Dallas could be over the head. Yeah, and the total is pretty heavy in this game. It's uh, 65 points I have. And when you look at the under, seven of the last nine Houston games have gone under. And... Who knows? I mean, you know, if you could get that up to like a 70, 72, 73 points, that might be the move as well, Dream. Especially, oh, no, if, especially if Cincinnati can't run the ball. And they sure. have, you know what I'm saying? So that's where the I'm at. You, if, the thing you get afraid of is in this particular game, when you're looking at the total, the thing that scares me is this. <clears throat> Cincinnati attempts to run the ball, has no success. Yeah. Decides to abandon the run game and now go through the air. Now you get yourself involved in what could possibly yeah. be, you know, a shootout. <laughs> Clock keeps stopping. Because right. st- when, you, when you have a pass-happy team in college football, you know, I'd say four out of seven times, maybe, maybe 60% of the time, your passes are for first downs. And, you know, especially if you're throwing the ball on the first down. And when you get a first down, that stops the clock. If you get an incomplete pass, that stops the clock as well. So I understand where you're going with that dream. Definitely. So, all right, guys. So we are going to get out of here. The hour flew by. I just want to thank our boy Anonymous Units from Units VIP. Somebody that does it for a living, bets his own games, and sits there and looks at the lines all day long. So it was great having him on the show, Dream. And I always love having guests on, especially quality guests like him. Sure, definitely good to have a quality guest on at all times. Uh, I want to thank everybody that's out there that's retweeted the program. Once again, we thank you guys for all your support nonstop each and every day that you give us. Terrence Max out there, C Rod, C Rodriguez Jr., the sports, or JDH24, what's going on? Joseph Del Rosario, Bosky, Terry Bouchard, Jay Snyder, INT, Blue Chip, Sir Mata, Andy, Jeff Ryan, Urban's out there, JC, Crook. Mr. Dr. Dizzle's in the house. The Sports Guy, SBTV's out there. Rick Lopez and Vegas Bill 92661. Gang, I am finally home. I know a bunch of people were hitting me up this weekend and wanted some thoughts, wanted some, you know, and hear my thoughts. And, you know, I tried to get, listen, I was basically on vacation with my boy and it was crazy. We just had a good time out in the lake enjoying us, enjoying myself. You know how it goes. If you're on vacation, you know what's up. I still gave you guys... Some, some, maybe got some attention days yeah, some time. Came on, did the show a couple days did my thing did what I had to do but I'm back now if you guys want to hit me up hit me up we will talk back and forth uh, hit me on the DM let me know what's going on I'm here I'll be getting back to you as I can just have some patience with me because there's quite a few people out there that likes to talk to your boy and get your boy's attention but I want to get back to each and every one of you and also give you an explanation as to why I haven't been listen always remember who you with the most of each and every day you cannot get this time back Absolutely, guys. So tomorrow, we bring in the Vegas Takedown yet again. We have Jim Feist and Mark Lawrence joining the show. Probably got about 80 or 90 combined years of experience between the two gentlemen who also do this for a living. And we will be getting them on. And the weekend, we'll be doing all the football shows. And Monday, we're bringing back Big Splee. We love you to death. Go out there. Go easy. Rise and grind. Do whatever it is you got to do to do whatever it is you want to do and get that money. Let's go. Peace.